we're live. What's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? Give us a second. We're just gonna tweet this link out. Welcome, welcome to NFT Art Talk live Monday through Friday here at on YouTube with myself, DJ Fetus, Ake Moshe, and Cardic NFTs. We will be talking about what we are doing, the art and artists that inspire us, and hot topics related to NFTs, art, music, fashion, and culture. Our primary focus is to have fun with new people interested in NFTs. The community around NFTs is growing fast, and we welcome all to experiment, explore, and learn with us. Welcome to our community of acceptance and celebration. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay in touch, and you can always follow us on Twitter, where we host spaces daily and hang out. All of our links are in the bio, on that banner right underneath here, and in the description. In today's episode, we're going to take some time to talk about some NFT artists and projects that have our interest. Then we're going to dive into music NFTs, including what they are, where you buy and sell them, and some people we are following in the space. Uh, without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to my co-host here at NFT Art Talk, Cardic. How's it going, Moshe? Good to see you again. Good new week going down. I'm ready to talk about some NFTs in the marketplace. Yeah, Apparently. man. Yeah, man. Feeling good. Feeling real good. A little, honestly, a little, a little sleepy. Had a had a pretty wild <laughs> night last night, but definitely here for this. Excited for this conversation for sure. Hey, you, bro. I went, we went out to Action Bronson here in Austin. So that's what's up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty tight concert. <laughs> yeah, I played a. I did an open mic at uh, at Chocolate Secrets here in Dallas, Texas. It's like the best name of a venue ever, dude. They make homemade chocolate in the upstairs. And then like the downstairs is this like bar slash venue slash chocolate place. It was real tight. It was real tight. I hadn't played an open mic in like 10 years, dude. It smell like chocolates while you're playing? Nah. 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 Nah, but they did give us free chocolate. So I was like, that's what's up. Yeah, that's, good. that's what's up. <laughs> Like I did blaze copiously before I came here. So this is pretty much perfect for me. Like chocolate, a guitar and like a bunch of wine. I was like, yeah, that's what's up. That's definitely what's up. That's cool, man. I guess you want to jump into this uh, pixel mod. Yeah. NFT launch. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So this is kind of like a ridiculous find I found while I was just scoping the internet about NFTs. Uh, it was about this art project for a video game, actually. Um, it was called Pixelmon. It was started by a 19-year-old New Zealand streamer. But uh, they were able to raise $70 million, but they're calling it the largest and highest quality game that NFT space has ever seen. Only be one of the disappointments in it ever to see in like, this whole space, I guess, right? Uh this person was trying to start a game, and I think he was only 19 years old. I don't even think he had the game ready. And they said he kind of bought like stock images off of like the Unity marketplace, basically to like promo it when they launched it. And uh, yeah, they were saying users paid about three ETH to even mint one, and then the floor dropped to 0.40 ETH. Um, you can kind of see the pictures up here. It's kind of funny. Uh, 
one of these comments that I guess Richard dot E, I believe he does manifolds and stuff like that. But he said people who bought picks them off at three E who who when they could have just uh, gone to Upwork to be hired the artist for a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, it's just kind of funny. I mean, honestly, that uh, might that thought- might be a stretch for for budget there for a hundred a hundred dollars. I might on Upworks. I might be like, bro, I can uh, get that five dollars on five. Yeah, my seven year old could do this for me and just give him a crayon. Oh, well, yeah, funny. man. I I thought that. Uh, yeah, here's just a couple <laughs> memes about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's, you know, it's, it's somewhat hilarious. But at the same point, it's like, man, if, uh, if you're going to support something, I understand it's a video game, so it's, it's a little different. You want you want to be a little more interactive about it. But, uh, you know, maybe support like an artist, you know, you know, that actually has like a portfolio. Because <laughs> at least if, if they got the 70 million, I know like any artist would collectively keep on producing the art. And, you know, it's uh, something in this case. I, I think a video game takes a team of people that know how to make it and do it. But. Yeah, at least a collective artist, they have the art that you can see and the kind of invest in. So I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny article, funny kind of like meme that has been going on recently. So I just kind of want to expose it to the whole community. Yeah. And it, I mean, honestly, do we have any more? Oh, no, that's, that's for the music. Uh, you know, honestly, too, like some of these NFT projects, like, I'm not trying to talk shit at all, but like some of them too that are still enormously popular and the floors did not drop out are just like blurred out pixels. Like, I mean, like someone was telling us the other day and showing us a bunch of uh, um, art on the Solana chain. And I guess pixel art is like really big on the Solana chain. And some of it, it honestly, it's just like blurry pixels. You know, it's like they pixel art and then just like blur it out. And, and I mean, it is like you said, like you, you still, you know, they're still able to build these communities around the art, Mm. you know? And I think a lot of times that's what you're, I mean, at least for me, whenever I'm like collecting, which I'm not like a financial advisor or an NFT advisor for anybody but myself and my own taste. So, (laughs) you know, I really do want to see that community or just an artist that I really believe in you know, that I think is like, I want to get in at the ground floor type thing. Uh, right. And yeah. And uh, like you said, uh, I'll always say this, but yeah, it's just, you, you kind of want to support the artist, right? Like that's, they're just making the art to make people feel good, you know, have a representation in their house or, you know, in their digital space or whatnot. And, uh, you know, when you support that artist, it just means so much more to that artist for that support. And they've always created the art. So even whatever they get in return for producing art there there's probably a more inspiration for them to even produce more or produce more unique new pieces or gain a community and fan fandom like you're explaining like in a discord group where there's actual community because you know hey there's an actual person they're actually trying to do the art and i believe in their vision yeah i mean and i mean i think that logic is just kind of extended for my whole life with artists that I want to work with, you know, like I love how it translates into this NFT space, but I do believe that that's something that, I mean, you just like to see people who give a shit about what they're doing and have other people that believe in what they're doing, you know? Um, But uh, before I, you know, we want to talk about an artist that's inspiring us too, but before we do that, uh, I want to remind everybody watching at home, that uh, we are doing a giveaway right now. Our first 10 subscribers are going to get customized tracks from us as long as we have a way to get in touch with you. So you can put your Twitter handle in the comments below and subscribe. Or if you have your contact information on your YouTube channel, when you subscribe, we will find you. Um, So and make sure that you get that track. So take a minute, subscribe, Get the notification so you know when we're live by hitting that bell next to the subscribe button and give us a like if you have a minute. Um, All right, a little promotion. Got to do it. Got to get it in there. You know, we're artists, but we're promoters. We promote our shit. Uh, We're just trying to get you some great music and great tracks, you know. Yeah, and and collaborate with people and just share what we have. Like, Cardi and I talk about it all the time. Like, 
you know, a digital artist has like terabytes and terabytes of like sketches and graphics and all this stuff that they've been doing their life and career. We're musicians and artists, but musicians first, honestly, and we have terabytes of music. So literally we're here to collaborate with anybody, not just on this giveaway. Also, if you want to collaborate, hit us up. Again, all of our contact is right down there uh, underneath us. But with, let's dive in. Let's keep going. Let's let's keep let's keep talking about these NFT things. Let me uh, share some screen. Yeah, I was thinking about we could talk about this uh, actually pretty cool artist. His name is Gal Youssef. Uh, he does uh, does a lot of three D digital art and animation. And you know, I thought I thought this would be a good contrast to the Pixelmon op, uh, project because this is an actual artist that's been doing art for a long time in his life. And uh, the first. First project I'm going to talk about is, is this Meta Eagle, uh, Metal e Eagle Club, basically. Um, they released, I think a few weeks ago, they actually released this uh, collective of 12,000 of these, like, Eagle 3D animation art. Uh, it has different textures to it, different uh, props on their face and stuff like that. But uh, what I thought was pretty cool about this is... Uh, trying to find the correct vet vocabulary for it because I was trying to look it up, but it seems like some type of transformative art because when they first released it, uh, for the people who minted it, and I think even you see someone were going for 45K, 41K, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, when I first was looking at this when they were minting it, and including you have to get a certain type of rarity for it to go up this level. But I remember it was around maybe like $1,000, $2,000, somewhere around there for the mint, right? I think it was around 0 0.50. Um, but he's been doing art forever. And what I really thought was cool about it is this kind of transformative art where when they first launched it, it was actually like you got an egg, right? And I think the 23rd, I want to believe, or 24th is when they do did a reveal where these eggs hatched and you actually revealed like which which one of these meta eagles you actually got. So I thought that was a cool way to release it, honestly. I was trying to look more into like, you know, what is the blockchain kind of terminology for all that, but I was just thinking it's kind of from an artist's point of view, it's like transformative art on releases, right? Uh, I just thought that was an interesting way to release it. I don't know if you had any kind of thoughts on that, Moshe. Yeah, I mean, I think it's happening more and more. Like, I, I, I know that uh, I think the Funky Flies collection, which we were talking about last week, I think they also did something really similar where they like, like they hatched you know, okay. at the mint and they right. were just kind of given the one that was in like whatever tier they were doing those on. Um, I think it's a really cool thing too, because I just think it's a cool way to get into a collection, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. Because I think, I mean, at least in their case, like they were like pre hatch, they were minting them. Like the people that could mint like that were paying a pretty affordable price for what's now a not as affordable collection, you know? Uh, right. You don't really know exactly what you're going to get. You just know it's going to be sick because the artist is sick. Uh, right. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of his, uh, he has like a actual, I guess, like print artwork and actual canvas artwork that's a mixed media that's released in different places. But it looks like a lot of 3D art that uh, incorporates like pop, pop culture, you know, like you have the Mario, I guess you have the Woody from uh, Toy Story, Pokemon um winning the poo things like that so he's he's well he i think he's pretty well known for all these he's been doing it for many years and uh he finally you know transitioned to like this bigger collection that he did in the metaverse or the nft space so i just think it's cool it's a it just shows you the artist that's created pretty badass work and also transforming it's the nft space kind of showing like a new new way to the fans of like hey this is how we could release the art you know and transform it over time so i thought that was, i thought it was just a pretty good pretty cool example honestly yeah i love this i love this 21st century sculptor <laughs> yeah it's like he's like a digital 3d you know because that's really i mean it's the truth it is it's what you know at least you and i very strongly believe is the future of art it's all happening in this metaverse digital space like you're having to learn new skills I love that title. Um, you know, also the other piece that jumped out, I know we were talking about this a little bit before we got on, um, is just the kind of the juxtaposition of those two projects. Like an artist right. who's kind of like featured in fine galleries, dropping these like really unique, crazy, awesome looking 
stuff versus like an artist who was also in the space, but just like, and I don't know, maybe he drew that himself, like the artist drew that himself, and he's like pissed off that everyone's talking shit. No, I don't mean to talk shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's the hardest thing, I just don't. Yeah. You know, I just it's it's just you know I don't I don't think we're talking shit. I think that's kind of the point. Is it's like that's why we really be- this is another reason why you and I really believe in this space because everybody has a place in this space whether you're a fine artist that's been doing this for 20 years or you're just somebody creating it from your phone and doing the best that you can to build a community and hype around what you're doing you have a place in this space too and nobody should be deterred from coming in here and trying out their art and I think that's what's so cool about those two specific projects. I also think it shows us like maybe how big the video game space is, right? And how much the community actually wants to be, have like an interactive experience with the art or just like, you know, funding the art and trying to make it something happen. So just something that like any artist should be thinking about, like how do, how do we incorporate in video games and things like that? You know, how to exactly this collaborative effort of multiple artists from many different things. Yeah, I can't wait to continue to see this this whole like the way that the art and the video games are starting to combine and like how it's becoming transactional even in that video game space and you know we'll have to like do some more episodes on gaming and even just the metaverse and honestly following us learning about it but also just talking about it i'm excited to talk about that um so those are some stuff that's that's interesting us. We thought we'd spend the last like 10, 15 minutes talking about music NFTs. Um, as some of you know, and we've talked about a little bit, Cardic and I have a really unique experience in music in general. Uh, we started with our band, our band, um, that played... Really, we accomplished so many goals and dreams in our band together. Uh, we played festivals. We played on both coasts, toured Texas, released albums, recorded albums in Grammy award-winning studios, collaborated with dope people. We opened up for Snoop Dogg with like one of our homies, Franchise, who's in Black Black now. Uh, accomplished some really cool stuff, all while simultaneously kind of like building our own music industry careers, mostly working in concert promotion, music management. Uh, our careers kind of expand the the map on all these sides. So uh, we thought it would be cool to start out with what is an, a music NFT with a little bit of our thoughts on it. But honestly, we'll probably have a lot of stuff about this. We're also releasing music NFTs ourselves um, on OpenSea and Foundation, a couple other apps. Um, sorry, marketplaces. You can find all those links below us as well. Um, so uh, let's talk about it, Cardiac. Uh, you wanna you wanna kick us off on this? I, I know I need to. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of share some slides that you've prepared for us. Uh, Definitely, man. This is more. Uh, we'll go through just like a generalized way of looking at like what are music NFTs and like what does it mean if you're an artist or like you're releasing it and what does it mean to a fan um yeah so first you can look at it in kind of a basic way it's like tokenized singles and eps or albums like selling singles that you know are authenticated by the blockchains the easiest way to kind of think about that uh fixed quantity of digital vinyls maybe look at that as like you know how an artist has a certain number of prints right there's only that many that are available so you could kind of do that same kind of thing in the nft space with your uh song or any of your tracks uh, those collectibles can be sold on a secondary market. So that's almost akin to like, say you buy an old school record right now, or you bought it in the past and now it's a very, way more valuable because it's a, a limited vinyl from there that you can sell it now for more as a collectible. Same thing kind of happens in the digital NFT space. Um, it is largely favoring independent artists because um, some of this crypto culture is kind of an independent movement from the masses, at least how it started. It's getting a little bit more traction now. But uh, with that, there is also a culture of, hey, how can we support the independent artists? How, how can we reach out to them? And that's a lot of things we see in Twitter spaces and discords and stuff like that. And also, it's an easy way to identify your super fans. For example, we talked about this in previous episodes, but you could find out like who are the first fans 
that uh, supported your art, bought the art. So now you would be able to identify those through the blockchain and have like Discord groups or certain forums that are just exclusive to them. And you could just kind of reward them and find the first people that were about it. Um, I don't know if you want to go to the next slide, Moshe, and just kind of talk about, yeah, like here's a couple other examples. Uh, you could buy a limited edition copy of your favorite song, bet on the future's upside an artist. So you're believing them in the first emphases of their career. It's real cool because they, you're just like a super fan, like I was explaining before. You're able to discover them like early on. I know that's a big thing um, when you're able to discover artists before too many people know about it. It's almost like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the hip crew because I was able to find that. I know kind of trends that I see. Um, it's a new new revenue stream. I tell this to everybody I, I meet. I have an accounting background. So I say, hey, like, you know, this whole crypto blockchain environment created a whole new rev revenue stream that They've kind of thought about the accounting side of it, honestly. I know we've talked about you could you could now have tracks and release it that way as is way different from like how you're releasing it on, you know, these streaming platforms and how much you, you're only relegated to like how much they're telling you that they're going to pay you for each stream. Like right now, you could actually dictate what you want from that in perpetuity. Um, you can hear exclusive music and build a cool relationship with the creator. I think that's real tight. Kind of talked about that before. Uh, do you want to go to the next slide, Moshe? Or is there anything you want to add on to this? Oops. I think I'll add on to just a little bit of this relationship with the creator. Um, because I think it is really interesting in this space. Because you have this, you have the crypto space. And so what does that mean? Like for people who are actively engaged with like their favorite products or projects, they're probably in a discord, following someone on Twitter, joining Twitter spaces, you know, hearing you really do have this one-on-one -on -one relationship that I think in the music industry, we saw it with, and we're seeing, we've seen it with like Patreon and um, what else? Like, some other I'm trying to think of some other platforms where you can like build like a community band following, camp. like Bandcamp or band fan, camp, yeah. like traditional fan clubs might be yeah, a good one. Reverb Nation, yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. So like there's there's so many of them. But this is so different than that, like you said, uh, because I think it's just the access of the people. I think the collectors right now in the NFT space also have knowledge in other spaces that can help artists. And when they like buy an artist NFT, they want to actually help the artist. They want to help them build a game on their discord to like increase people's ranks in the community. They want to help them build like a smart contract so that they don't get fucked over by someone, you know? And right. so I just think that that's where I think it's different. It's like in, then a lot of, I just think the community that's there now is a lot different you know um but yeah i'll i'll keep it i'm gonna keep it rolling uh, yeah let's go to the next slide um yeah so most music nfts have no inherent ownership they solely represent a scarce digital collectible song what that means is basically the artist will still own like publishing rights in this old kind of system we're still using so look at this new system of nfts being it is like more like a digital collectible um, which you could resell on NFT second market or display in a virtual gallery, which I thought was interesting as just a side, I went in Decentraland, people had virtual galleries on there that you could go sell the art. Probably talk about that a little bit more on another episode. Um, you could use it to get token gated discord access. So what this means is, uh, I talked about this in a previous episode, there was a program called collab out land that kind of just checks that this person actually purchased the actual NFT and then they're able to get into a discord channel exclusively for those people who own those NFTs. So now you're finding tiers of your super fandom, basically. Uh, some of the things that are not outlined in, uh, I would say like Ethereum networks because Solana was a little bit different, but in uh, Ethereum networks right now, it says they like, monetize the underlying AIP. So it's like, you can't just like buy someone's song unless they say like, hey, you can use it for everything, right? Uh, like publishing and all that, like within Ethereum's network. And that's the way you could probably do it. But it's not really listed there as like one of the categories to go through. I know in Solana, you could actually say like, hey, 
I'm selling this NFT. You could do non-commercial, commercial, or private or public use. So that's an interesting thing between blockchains and how that develops over time. Um, yeah, collect on behalf of the artist. This whole system is kind of set up so that the artist owns their own wallet and actually getting their money from the actual IP they own. So that's what that means. And redistribute your licensed song without the artist's permission. That's a whole nother thing. Like if the artist gives you rights to that in the Ethereum, you know, network, then you could do. But if it's not, it's not embedded in any any of the contracts I see really right now. Right? Yeah. There's obviously they could amend that and then add that in there. I know. But yeah, you want to go on a little bit about that? I'm trying to like think actually as we talk, I'm like, man, we should really for one of our interview series, we should get like an attorney on and and see what they say, because obviously we're not attorneys. So so we don't know. And I mean, we've worked with plenty in the music industry, but I'm so curious on if somebody buys my music NFT and they like the downloadable content is a track like my question is, and if anybody knows, they can maybe leave it in the comments for us here, is, you know, do you just basically assume precedent for that song? You know, because it, it like, and what I mean by precedent is, you know, the rights assigned to that person are pretty much the same as like an iTunes. Like if you bought it for 99 cents on iTunes, my song, like mm. what you can do with it after you right. buy and, it, you know? And yeah, and I, well, I think what I think out of that is like really what this is coming back to is like, how does the artist really want to release their material, right? Like you have this old system kind of set up a way like, hey, this is how many royalties you get from each stream. You know, this is how, how you know, we're going to sign a contract for sync. And that's like an old e-commerce system. And this one, it's just like, it is e-commerce, right? But the artist can totally be like, exactly like you said, like, hey, if you buy this track, you can do whatever you want to do with it. You know, you could resell it, you could you could resample it and all that. It's coming and how much royalties they want to get from it from like 100, 100 to 100 percent, 99 percent to like 1 percent. Right. It just comes back to like what's so interesting. That's like it's all about how does the artist want to release the material. Right. Giving that power to them back. I think that's what this is all reflecting, honestly. I've honestly just. I just think exactly. I think you just have to like mention what your expectations are to people when you can is kind of my thought. I don't know if that stands up in the court of law. Again, I'm not a lawyer, nor am I capable of advising artists on, on what it works. But I do know that like, as an artist, I've always found that I'll just be transparent with people, you know? So whether I'm putting that in like a description when I upload it onto a platform, that's like, Hey, this is just for your personal use, you know? Um, or whatever, whatever the legal is that you want to include, like tell people, you know, um, yeah, that's my thought. But I, I, th- I personally, as an artist, just believe that music NFTs are the future. I, I mean, we'll keep talking and about why we believe that. Yeah, man, I, I know the way I'm looking at it because I had a track that got 300,000 plays on Spotify, made probably like a thousand bucks from it. So it's like when I look at it, at least I have an example. So it's like, should I release how much do I want to release the NFT for versus like my prior history of like this got like 300,000 plays, right? So it's like, okay, let's, you know, G over maybe like a year, right? So do I, do I sell the NFT as a way of like, hey, do I sell that at 500 or 1,000 or 1,200? Because I have a market value, basically, one of my old tracks, right? So it just, over time, I think for the artist, you evaluate, like, what is that worth in your ecosystem and what that means in your creation? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, when it comes to pricing and you're just starting, I still believe firmly that, and people can dispute, you know, we can argue this as much as you want, but I believe that artists should price that they know how much their stuff is worth. And that's what you should price it at. And mm-hmm. if the answer to that is this is priceless, then why are you trying to price it anyways? You know, find some other way to share that with the world, you know? Right. Um, because, like, the priceless stuff should be belong to me. I mean. Uh, yeah. Hey, I, I know for me, it's like I, I feel that way. Like, I just want the music out there for everybody. But it's like I'm able to, like, sell the digital piece as, like, a video, music video. Because I'm like, okay, I could always have the power to release the music however I want to release it. Well, so it's and, exactly how Moshe is explaining it. And and the power of the addition. Like, I think that's a really easy way to understand this, you know, is it's like, mm-hmm. think about, like, 
<clears throat> if you're a print collector, right? Like you want that numbered print, like one out of a hundred or seventeen from a hundred. Or if you're a, if you're a collectible, like a cards, so like you're collecting like playing cards, like basketball cards or something, right? Like you want that two out of ten LeBron James rookie, you know? And that's basically what NFTs are doing for musicians, right? I can take a song, sure, you can listen to that song on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen to your music, but you can only buy one out of these ten or one out of these two thousand or whatever where this song is associated to the art that I, the artist, want it to be associated to. And that's where we can start having rarity in songs that we just haven't had before, right? Because it's never been about, because like you said, like the one song that, you know, you have as an artist, like that just blows up and it's like you're single, you know? Well, the NFTs that are associated to this like single that you have blowing up, those are probably going to be more rare because there's there's a, like like you said there's more of an associated value you know and then each edition that you come out with that has that song on it like again i think that's where the rarity is and and we'll talk more about rarity and music when we dive into the examples here um on this episode um but before we do that i thought this was a really interesting slide so I'll, i'm gonna let Cardic talk through it yeah, so this is a, a, a sound music platform that releases NFTs, but I just found it interesting. They said they had nearly $1 million of music NFT sales in two months. All the so sound drops have sold out in five minutes. These are just songs they're releasing on the platform, basically, from ours. Uh, they have experienced listening parties from Web3 native artists. So I'm assuming that means like you're in that Web3 ecosystem with your wallet tied, that they're just having listening parties and they could identify who the fans are and such and like who bought who bought the songs uh collect editions representing early support and a seat in the audience so that's kind of elaborating on what i just explained um you could trade growing secondary markets of music nfts and OPC. so like you buy their buy the nft from sound out xyz you're able to just go on OPC or any secondary and resell it and yeah it's just the auth authenticity of like showing that you bought that show your proof of fandom as i always say all nft is is just a digital receipt of the good basically so that's just another way of saying it yeah and it just shows how popular these things really are like you're we're not i mean they're not like the biggest piece of the nft market but they're <clears throat> they're not they should not be overlooked um and I think we can see that even here on this on this slide, you know. Yeah. So these are just two other ones. Uh, yeah, like this uh, nearly two point five million NFT sales, one on one catalogs. You know, collect rare editions. Um, I believe. Yeah, there's just different types of bigger artists on this platform. Tycho, Philly, Heli, uh, Boys Noise, and Slender Boys. I think I've yeah. heard Tycho and Boys Noise before. Yeah, um, and Nas. You know, like. Nas is on Royal.io, so I believe this, they have some basis in Austin, because I think I've been following them and stuff, but yeah, they release uh, songs, and the owners of that get the royalties from those songs, so they kind of flipped it as to, you know, you're you're investing in the ownership of the song, so, you know, it's like investment in a catalog, basically. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so, and yeah, here's a list of people to follow that are kind of like moving the uh needle in that scene the big one i know is three loud just because i think he's a dj so a couple of these other ones i got to look up a little bit more but you know these are just interesting slides i kind of found that you know just kind of outline the space a little bit more i i know as a musician i'm still learning a lot about it so it's good to find information like that and some of the influencers in that space so they can kind of give you leads on like what's going on yeah, and we did link, I, I went through that slide really fast, but we did link everybody in the description below. So if you want to go follow them, just go down and you can get directly to their profile. Um, well, I, I probably shouldn't have stopped sharing the screen because we did have one more share here. Um, yeah, so we wanted to, uh, to wrap up um, today with somebody that we've kind of been following in the space, doing music also. Um, we put her Twitter down below also. Um, she's actually minting right now. These collections are being minted. Uh, her, I think it's her Genesis collection, maybe? I'm not exactly sure, but her name is Violetta. I can't pronounce her. I don't want to butcher her name. 
Zizzoni. She's an Italian artist. Um, she's super active in the spaces, so definitely give her a follow on Twitter. And like I said, you can go from Twitter. You can find her OpenSea, and all this stuff is on sale right now. I think for the next 24 hours, some of them maybe a little bit longer. Um, but some of her like premier pieces are, are on sale now. Something that jumped out to, to Kardik and I as we were like talking about it, not only does she have an, an amazing voice, um, but it's just the way that she's using her properties on OpenSea. We just had to talk about this because it is really, really cool. Um, you know, so this is where this addition comes in. So basically this picture with this song she has released five of those. So she has a, this is a one of five. Um, it's the second one of the one of five. Um, and then it has this song associated, which basically is 31% of her gallery has this specific song associated. Um, so <clears throat> if we looked at her gallery, if my computer will load, yes, it will. All right. How about that? in the middle of a mint auction. Um, you can kind of see that she has a bunch of other songs in here too. So like this one, I think is one of the more rare ones. She like shot this video in her home of her recording it. And then it also has the traits. Um, well, I don't know if OpenSea is gonna let me open it, but anyways. Um, it also has these traits and it's like one of the more rare ones. So of course it's priced, it's one of the higher priced ones. And I just, again, I just think it's really interesting that as musicians, we can kind of enter into this game of like, our music can have additions and it can have rarity based off of like how many times this track is associated with a visual inside of here. It's not just one music video, you know what I mean? And I just think like, man, imagine when there's like a rarity, I mean, I don't know if you can track on rarity tools like music NFTs yet. I want to look into that, but I just think that's going to be so great for artists. And it's really going to, what it's going to do is when you get in on the ground floor of these artists, you're going to have like an asset that really grows with them more than that, like band t-shirt that you bought for 20 bucks and later sold it for 200. I think you're going to see a much bigger scale than that. Even in the poster art, when, you know, there's multi thousand dollar, $10,000, $15,000 band fo like posters, right? But there's no music. It's just a poster, you know? So like, I think when you add the music, it adds more value. It adds more opportunity of growth. And I'm really excited to start launching some of my collections with this sort of thing in mind. So thank you for putting us onto that, you know? Yeah, that was a real badass example, actually. Um, just to further elaborate, what, what rarity he's talking about is basically when you see these like bigger collections, Board Ape Yacht Club, like those ones that are going above average value, right? Like I think Board Apes around 200K, which you'll see like this one sold for millions, you know what I'm saying? And what that is, it's like they're labeling out the properties when you upload that actual asset, right? So like when they loaded up like the Board Ape Yacht Club and said like, board api has a hat has a jacket things like that so what we're trying to say is like when you're uploading your music nfts you want to think about these properties basically right because that's how your collection can go up in value possibly if more people get involved in it right and you're able to actually have identifiers that say like hey this is the most rarest of the rare in your collection if, it, if you're not like I know there's one of one artist, so each piece is rare, but you know, if you're releasing multiple editions of everything, the, you have to identify these things at the beginning. So that's why we're kind of explaining this to the artist. And it's worth thinking about as a collector and an artist, it's worth thinking about how can you make additions, you know, so that you can build your own rarity for your one of ones. You know what I mean? I, I believe that's just something I think. And um, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Right. And I'll just add one little side thing to that. Whenever we hear those stories, like there's a story like, oh, this board API got listed or CryptoPunk got listed at less than uh, average value on accident and stuff. What's going on in that is like you have AI bots looking for undervalued NFTs to go purchase. Right. So they're looking at this rarity attribute, basically. Right. So it just gets kind of wild when you look at it like that. Like, why is this going up in value? It's really because of the rarity of it. So I just kind of want to add that detail in there. Yeah, I 
Thank you for adding that. And before we get off of here, um, I did also want to share uh, a live chat from our, our homie Mofos, Mark. Um, he was also just mentioning in, in the chat about how he likes that it like this whole music NFT opens up this opportunity for collab collaborative efforts. Um, so, for instance, if a musician has stems or samples, they can share that from the song as part of the unlockable content. So when like, you know, maybe like a DJ or a producer buys their buys that NFT, they can also go remix the song. You know, which then comes back to like something we were talking about last week with like stem player and the access of just being able to like have these quick tools. So, you know, that's another cool thing is it's like as artists, we can really not only think about how can we make this specific one, give it properties for rarity. We can also think about what can we offer to collectors as unlockable content that we have not offered in the past, you know, because it's a, right. there's a whole new world to this. You know, yeah. and like you, like even as we were talking about before, it could unlock like the ability to have some sort of new access in my Discord or fan club or whatever. So, uh, man, this was a great episode. I'm glad. I'm happy to yeah, be no, back yeah. this week. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm sorry. I'm, glad, I'm, I'm sorry we weren't here yesterday. It got it got a little wild, but <laughs> it gets wild every once in a while. But but we're here. We're here. We're here to stay. We'll always be here to listen. We're still in active in all the spaces, Twitter spaces, online, and all that. Yeah. So hit us up. Make sure to like and subscribe. Definitely subscribe. That's how you're going to get yourself into this. I think we have maybe four more spots left for this giveaway and then we'll get everything sent out to everyone. Um, like subscribe, hit the bell. So you get notifications when we're live. Most importantly, take it easy, feel a vibe, check out some art. That's fun to look at. Listen to some great music. Like just love your life. Like I'm going to use the platform for that. Uh, exactly. Love your life. And I'll just end on, I was in these spaces and there's still a lot of people like we need more music engagement, you know, in this and it is welcome there. So if you are an artist and you're a musician, just get, you know, know that there's a community out there that you can get involved with. Yeah. And get involved with us. Cause we, we definitely want to hear from you. So we'll see you guys tomorrow.